each of the publications and so on. I should probably say that. that our film paper will be just as required to make a copy of paper is going to be just as required to film in the paper that might be a new time as well. And um, so uh, in my talk I'll try to, I'll try to uh, briefly uh, explain you why a material like graphene, which looks extremely simple, it has this hexagonal structure, this uh, carbon atoms arranged in two-dimensional Hexagonal pattern uh, attracted so much attention from from researchers or, uh, across the world, and why it might be interesting for future applications as well. So the easiest way to introduce graphene, uh, I'll just do it, is the think about various forms of carbon in terms of uh, in terms of nationality. And of course, the most well-known form is graphite, and you, you all know because you use it for pencils. And we will know it for about 500 years, and I'll come back to this to this date later on in my talk. Then, some time ago, quite a zero-dimensional form, which is buckyballs or cage molecules, have been discovered as basically molecules which consist of a few tens of, of, of carbon atoms. And uh, a few years later, quite a one-dimensional form, carbon nanotubes, have been obtained. And now we have this missing dimensionality, dimensionality 2, which of course has been quite regularly killed by theorists. They introduced this fictitious material, they call it graphene, and they really like to play with it, but it has never been obtained until very recently. And honestly, uh, if I ask you which of those materials, this one, which is uh, graphite, which we know for 500 years, or uh, cage molecules for, for 25 years, or carbon nanotubes, which one of those is studied theoretically the most, 500 years, 25, 20, or just very recently. Well, it appears to be that actually graphene has been studied theoretically the most, because of course it's the simplest one, and theorists don't like the complicated questions which we experimentalists are facing in everyday life. So they would calculate this, um, the properties of graphene, and then simply use it to, to uh, extrapolate it on buckyballs, which is red graphene, or carbon nanotubes, which is gold graphene, or graphite, which is just graphene layers stuck one upon each other. So the reason why um, this fictitious material attracted uh, so much attention very soon after it has been isolated for the first time is basically because even the simple list of all the cyclicalities of this material would occupy this very slide very easily. It's, of course, the thinnest possible material, the most conductive, the most thermally conductive, the most impermissible, and, and so on, and so on. And for me, the most important here are those three points, which means that those uh, properties which we haven't discovered yet and then which we are working on right, right now. Of course, I'm not going to bore you to death with all those, all, all those uh, properties in sequence. I will have my very own short, um, short list of the, of the nice properties of this material. First, we shouldn't forget that this is the first two-dimensional crystal. And uh, we're, often, we're often blinded by the very unusual electronic properties or mechanical properties, but in fact, it's the first two-dimensional crystal which is available to us, and it's really open to the Pandora box for, uh, for other two-dimensional crystals, and that's what I really want to, uh, to, to, to talk to you a little bit more. And then, of course, we have very unusual electronic properties due to unusual, um, uh, due to unusual um, special relations for quasi-particles, and I'll try to cover a little bit on this. And I will talk, I'll mention a, a little bit of, on applications because uh, although we are only, what, seven years down the line, there are quite a few of those applications which are already available to us with, with graphene. So let me first touch this issue of two-dimensional crystals and why do we think that two-dimensional is something special. Well, I will, I will give you a little bit of historic introduction, though there, there will be a couple of those in my talk, so and theories 